The following broadcast is a presentation of Mount Zion Media Ministries. scripture today comes from the book of John chapter 3 and verse 16 and Daniel will lead us in our reading from uh, the King James Version John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life amen thank you sir that's it you want to you want to help me preach too Next time, next time. <laughs> All right, he ready, he ready to roll. <laughs> Amen. Um, so the subject of the sermon from John 3.16 today is simply this. The gift that keeps on giving. Pastor Brian Jones mentioned that and did a very good job of highlighting that in a video he did for our evangelism ministry a couple of weeks ago. And we had not talked, but when I heard it, I just smiled and said, God has us on the same page. But that phrase first started with a song in 2007 um, that was written um, really for children, a um, little group called Furry Animals, I wrote the song. And then it just caught on, and advertisers started using the phrase to entice us to buy certain gifts. And the idea is that you ought to choose this gift because unlike some gifts that give out after a while, this gift keeps on giving. And the truth be told, all of us in here are guilty. And I'm not saying this in a disparaging way, but we are all guilty of buying gifts whose value is brief. I mean, I bet some parents in here got stacks. Matter of fact, you had to make some room for the new gifts because the gifts you got last year, your children don't even play with them anymore unless another child comes over and takes an interest in them. And then we grown folks bought some toys that, you know, we, 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 we spent a lot and we loved them for a moment, but they don't give us what they used to give. And so we don't, we don't play with them anymore either. And again, you, you, you buy what you want, but I want you to remember this Christmas that there was a gift under your tree if you had one. And if you didn't have a tree, there was a gift given to you. And it is a gift that truly keeps on giving. Amen. We've preached the past couple of Sundays different narratives about the birth of Jesus Christ. And Jesus really is the gift to the world for Christmas. It is why we celebrate to remember that this thing called Christmas, this De December 25th, although we cannot authenticate that it is his actual birthday, we pause to celebrate it, to say happy birthday to Jesus and thank God for giving him to us. And I want you to know that while you might not have put Jesus on your wish list, he should have been on there. You should have had him on there because out of all the gifts that you can give, I'm telling you, he is the gift that keeps on giving. And, 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 and I'm not going to be long today. I told y'all last week, y'all saw how short I was. So, so watch me again this week. So, so look at John 3.16 again. And let, and let me show you the foundation of this gift. And then I want to show you how that foundation allows God to build and keep giving through Jesus Christ. First of all, I want you to note why God gave us the gift. It says, for God so loved the world. It was simply because of his love. And notice the world. God didn't just choose a particular people. That phrase encompasses everybody in the world, regardless of race, gender, sex. God so loved the world. And, and I need you to, to pay close attention to when he loved us. The Bible says in the book of Romans that he loved us. 
He commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. And so I don't want anybody to get it twisted to think that God gave his son and his son gave his life because we were good and deserved it. But all of us had sinned and come short of the glory. And while we were in our sins, and let me tell you now, God is always present tense. There is no past. That there is no future. It's present. And so when he died in 2000, 2,000 years ago, he had my sins and yours in mind. And it was purely out of his love that he gave. And what did he give? I'm glad he was not cheap. He gave his only begotten son. He didn't go to Dollar General to the close out right. He didn't re-gift a gift that he got and he didn't want. He was not one of those people that want the best, but you want to give somebody else the less. But he gave his only begotten son. And when he gave his only begotten son, he gave the best that he had and he gave all that he had. There was nothing left with him that was more valuable to give when he gave his son Jesus he gave his best and his all and why did he do that his only begotten son so that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting or eternal life and I and, and I just have to pause for a moment to say something I said repeat myself because, you know, some of us are religious. We, we think God thinks and acts like us. We got certain folk that we like. We got certain folk that we want in the church. But please look at it. I didn't make that up. That verse says, whosoever will. So that whosoever puts their faith in him, believeth in him, look at it again now, should not perish. You would not be destroyed. You would not go to hell. But you shall have everlasting or eternal life. And so the foundation in this gift is salvation. So anybody who puts their faith in this gift called Jesus has salvation. And that salvation never runs out. It keeps giving to you. It keeps giving to you your secure position in Jesus Christ. It's not based on what you did last night or what you will do tomorrow, but it's based on that faith that you put in, in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and your salvation is secure. Amen. It's locked down. It's sealed until Jesus comes back or until you go to him. And, and, and it says everlasting life or eternal life. And that means in terms of time, there is no end to the gift. And usually when we say everlasting or eternal life, that's what we, we think about, time. But I want you to know that the time portion is only the beginning. It's the foundation. So once you're saved, you're saved for eternity. But listen, you don't go to live with the Lord as soon as you're saved. At least, and I, I hope that's not what you want. I think you want to live around here for a little while. Can I get a witness in here? Yeah, yeah. If, if, if there was a bus out there loading up folk going to heaven this morning, I'm telling you, I want to go to heaven, but I'm not going out there to get on that bus. Because I am not ready. And so as simple as, as I can put it, you've got this foundation given to you, salvation, and it's, it's in eternity. But salvation also has to do with the quality of life. And so what the gift of Jesus Christ does, this Christmas gift that's available to all of us, he gives gifts throughout our lifetime, starting from the moment that we are saved, to change the quality of our lives. If you are a believer, there ought to be a difference in the quality of your life. There ought to be a difference in your lifestyle. There ought to be a difference in your disposition because once Christ comes into your life, he comes to change you, he comes to change your circumstances, and he gives to you what you need for the change. Christians have been walking around singing the wrong songs. Can't hardly get along. Why? 
If you got Jesus, why are you struggling to get along? I'm not saying you won't struggle, but you, 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 you've got somebody to help you in the struggle. I'm climbing up the rough side of the mountain. Why? He said, speak and let the mountain move. And all of this, this piety we've given around poverty and, and just moping and being pitiful, ain't, there ain't nothing glorious about that. Because he's given us what we need as a gift, and it continues, he continues to give it to change the quality of our lives. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something now that I don't know I'm going to do when I preach. Um, and so y'all, y'all just stay with me. I'm changing my preaching style. I usually just kind of stay with the text and open it up, but I'm... I'm, I'm getting ready to take you through the ABCs. <laughs> and I, I won't be able to finish all of them because I have to keep you here all day. But what I want to suggest to you is you uh, uh, listen. When you're li uh, looking at the alphabets from now on, look at them and see in them for every letter a gift that God gives you. Because I told you it keeps on giving, right? There's the foundation. And to change the quality of your life, he gives you these other gifts. And so A stands for abundance. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And so to improve the quality of your life, he gives you abundance. Do you know we shout about the miracle of the loaves and the two fish? the two fish and the five loaves where he fed the mother too. But I wonder if, if you really get what he was trying to say. He was saying to disciples that had a scarcity mentality, feed that multitude. There's a need. We can't do it. We ain't got enough. We check the budget. We don't have enough money to buy all that. And then we look and there's not enough food in the crowd. All we got is a boy with two fish and five loaves of bread. And then he said, well, bring me what you got. Break it, blessed it. And they took that and fed the multitude. Abundance. And then he said, and take up what is left so that nothing be wasted. He was trying to teach us with our scarcity mentality that because of my presence in your life, I'm giving you the gift of abundance. Because listen, whatever gift I give you, it's for you to help bring my will to pass in the earth. Thy will be done, thy kingdom come. Where? Let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, 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 and as you work out his will, it's going it's to be directed toward one or two things, either to meet a need or solve a problem. There was a need for food. There was a problem. And the gift they had had to be uh, used for them to solve the problem, meet the need. And they couldn't have done it out of scarcity. And so God created abundance out of two fish and five loaves. And I can't stay here long, but I'm trying to tell you, you, you're walking around with can't hardly get along. God can't use you to bring his will to pass because you got to have some overflow, some abundance to meet somebody else's need. You got to be able to put food on your table, but also to help somebody else put food on their table. And God never gives the abundance to folk for long, who going who gonna to store it up for themselves? Your stuff molded because you too stingy to pass it on. And so, A, he gives abundance. That's a gift. And it just keeps on giving because of this initial gift. And B, belong. I told you it's to meet a need, solve a problem. Every human being got a need to belong. That's why children want to know who, who's my daddy, who's my mama. I need to belong to somebody. That's why uh, folks seek out relationships because nobody really wants to be alone. They want to belong. That's why we spend money and go through hell to join organizations because we want to belong somewhere. And so Jesus says, let me tell you something. All of these things you're doing to try to feel that need through the flesh, let me show you where that real need is fulfilled. When you understand that you belong to me, and because of your sin, you didn't belong to me, but I sent my son Jesus. And you belong to me first in relationship, because when you put your belief in me, I gave you the power to become sons and daughters. I adopted you 
as my son and daughter, you belong to me. And then you belong to me in terms of ownership because you know you are not your own. You've been bought with a price. I bought you when I died on Calvary. I paid the ultimate price so that you could be mine. And so what you have to live with to change the quality of your life is the fact that I belong to Jesus. Yeah. So you don't want me in your organization? Bump you. I belong to Jesus, babe. I don't need you to validate my identity. I don't need your letters on my shirt to make me somebody. I belong to Jesus. I don't care if you want to date, you don't want to date me, you're going to quit me, gone. I'm tired of you anyway. Gone. I belong to Jesus. May not be able to find my earthly father, my earthly mother, but I have a father who owns me. And if I could get believers to understand how important that relationship is and stop tripping over on religion, but just having a relationship with Jesus and knowing that you belong to him, you wouldn't worry so much. You feel better, you look better. You wouldn't worry because you know if you belong to him, you don't have anything to worry about because he's going to take care of your every need. See, see those, see those look, two little children over there? Now they got a mama who takes care of that need, but I promise you, if there's any need that they got, I'm going to go through hell and high water to meet it. If, if, I, if I got to eat rocks every day so they can eat, they're going to eat. And God is so much better than me at taking care of the folk who belong to him. And he'll, and, and he'll take care of you so you don't have to worry. You, you belong to him. And it just makes you feel better and look better when you know you belong to somebody. You, you, you know how some of y'all look when you think you, that little man is the bomb or that woman, you know, she all that, and you get on your shoulder. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's like when I watch Steve Harvey on Instagram, he and his little wife, they be walking out the hotel or somewhere, and they just be strutting, just paying up. And, and, and you can just see the pride on both of them face. He proud of her, she proud of him. You walk with the Lord. You walk with him. And so, and so, and so you, you, you belong to him. And that's a gift that he gives to you. You don't have to buy him. He chooses you. C, A, B, C, companionship. He promised never to leave you or forsake you. And so you're never alone. And I'm going to speed up. I'm going to just give you the highlights. And so C again is companionship. And when God promises never to leave you or forsake you, you got to understand that that's what it is. He's going to always be with you. He will never forsake you. Nothing will separate you from the love of God. The next letter is D. That stands for divinity. Once you are saved, God grants you and I a piece of himself. And then we become divine. We're still human, but there is a divine portion in you. Now, I'm getting ready to sound crazy to some of y'all, uh, to some of y'all, but y'all better hear me. And so when you're born again, the spirit of God comes to live in you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in you. That part of divinity that's in you is a part of the same God that set out one day in nothing and said, let there be and start creating. It's the same God that sustained what he created. It's the same God. It's the same God that's in you. And therefore then, that means if that divinity is in me, I ought to have some power. And not just any power, but the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in you. And, and if I understand that, if you understand that, stuff like this should come out your mouth. I'm weak. And there are moments when we're weak, but I'm talking about living a lifestyle of weakness. Amen. Creativity. You have the, the divine capacity in you to create a world in conjunction with God's will beyond the one you're living in. Where you're living and what you experience is a result of what you, what you settled with. When in you is the capacity to create whatever you want. 
and then to sustain it. Because it's one thing to get it, and then three months later, you lost it, or five years later, you lost it. But God gives you the ability, the ability through your divine nature to both create and sustain. And how many of you know your quality of life will change? When instead of seeing a problem and complaining, the creative juices start flowing. I got a solution to that. I can meet that need. Boom. Change happens. And let me just say this to you before I go to the next letter in the alphabet. And that is, some of you chasing paper. And it's going to be a futile chase. But if you start letting the creativity and the sustaining power of your divine nature mix with the power of God in your work, paper will start chasing you. Because you will do things that meet the needs of people that solve problems and paper will just start coming your way. A, B, C, D, E. Exceptionality is, is the E. You get the gift of exceptionality and again and again, it's always tied to meeting these solving problems and you have to walk in every space you're in knowing that you are the exception. Even in your family. Well, I'm in a family and my family background, everybody has done this. As a child of God, I am the exception. You are the exception. I will not be limited by my family background. Because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. I'm new. The crowd are hanging. I'm the exception. Oh, you ain't going to never get married. Babe. I'm the exception. You will never. I'm the exception. When I was in the 11th grade, a uh, math teacher slash assistant principal told me and my siblings, Sammy and Marilyn, that none of us would graduate from Cairo High School, and he was going to see to that. Well, Sammy graduated from Thomasville High and Marilyn from Central, but I graduated from Cairo High because I said, I'm going to graduate, and you won't stop me. I'm the exception. He kept a lot of people from graduating, but you won't keep me. Because even then, I understood the power of my exceptionality through Jesus Christ. And so you're not bound by anything, but you are exceptional. Because here is what comes along with your new creatureness, your salvation, is this. A God who has this on his resume. And now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything that you could think or ask. Exceptionality, that's you. A, B, C, D, E, F. <laughs> and so he's your food for life. That's a gift that you get. In John chapter 6, and Daniel and I read through John chapter 6 on uh, Thursday, and, and he says he's arguing with those uh, our Jews and they're talking about well if, you, if you're the Messiah give us some bread Moses gave us bread from heaven if you bad beat Moses he said Moses didn't give you bread but my father gave you bread and that bread you ate in the wilderness you ate that bread and died but now God has sent the real bread and they said well where is the real bread show us the bread you looking at it I am I am the bread of life he that eateth this bread Shall live and not die. And so he's the food for life. How do, you, how do you keep yourself going? How do you stay, hold it together? How do you be fulfilled? You got to eat the right food. So he's, he's the food. Yeah. E-F-G. Grace. And you better be glad. Yeah. I told you, it's, it's connected to meeting needs. And, and the first need for grace is yours. Y'all walk around here again trying to trip and fool me. Y'all don't fool me. And you're not fooling anybody else. All of us in here need some grace. And, and for the young folk in here that don't know what grace is, grace is when you mess up. And you don't get what you deserve because God forgives you and don't hold it against you. Grace is when you need to accomplish something 
and you don't have all you need and God fills in the gap so that you can achieve what it is he has you striving for and it's grace that gives it to you. Grace is what you have. When you go to God and say, God, I can't handle this. It's more than I can bear. And you ask him three times at least to take it from you. And God says to you, I'm not going to answer your prayer like you asked me. I'm not going to take the thorn out of your flesh. But what I'm going to give you is something greater than deliverance from your problem. I'm going to give you some grace because my grace is sufficient and it is made even more powerful in your weakness. I transfer to you what you need called grace to get through your infirmity. But come close to me. You shout when you get grace. But you don't want to give grace to other folk. Pastor, I think you need to send them to hell. Pastor, I think you need to sit them down. Pastor, they shouldn't sing. They shouldn't pray. They should. Oh, Pastor, I don't know why you hang with them. The same reason I hang with you. Because grace. And in fact, the same reason I hang with myself. Because of grace. And then H, then H that's the Holy Ghost. And I, don't, I won't spend much time there because uh, most of you already know about that thing, that person called the Holy Spirit. It's God living on the inside of us. The Holy Spirit. And so the I stands for illumination. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And that light has to do with illuminating, showing us things and, and giving us revelation. And the Bible even said that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light on our pathway. And so you and I need illumination. Young people, listen to me. Um, all of us, no matter what our age, we think we know more than we know. And we can figure out problems and we can figure out life. But let me tell you something. Uh, when you live long enough and, and you get wise enough, you understand that you really don't know. And you, so, you, so you need some illumination. You, you need God to turn some light on some folk. Because there's some stuff in them and about them that you can't see. But when God put the light on them and show you what you're missing, you got to get them blinders off, that love blinder off, and see what God is trying to show you before you end up somewhere you don't want to be. Everybody telling you, that man going to kill you. That woman going to kill you, but you can't see it. So you need some illumination about jobs, about careers, about this move and that move and doing this. You, and, 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 and you have the gift of illumination given to you because when you are saved, you get it and you keep on giving. Uh, what, what come out there, Jay? You got justification. The Bible uses this language. Sin is something that God hates. Thanks for watching. Be blessed and continue walking in the light.